Hi, here we are for another little bit of The Phantom Tollbooth, written by Norton Jester. So, we're up to chapter 9 today, and this chapter is called It All Depends How You Look At Things. Are you ready for that? So, uh, I had another little flick through, another new voice to contend with tonight. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of ideas, I can't do that many accents. Gosh, I'll have a go though. I'm thinking of something a bit boisterous for this one. Uh, I don't know what the character is like. He might not even be a boisterous character. He might be a quiet character for all I, all I know. But with my limited range, <laughs> darling, he's going to be a boisterous character. He might only be in it for a couple of minutes for one chapter. But hey, what the heck? Let's go for it. Soon, all traces of Dictionopolis had vanished in the distance and all those strange and unknown lands that lay between the kingdom of words and the kingdom of numbers stretched before them. It was late afternoon and the dark orange sun floated heavily over the distant mountains. A friendly cool breeze slapped playfully at the car and the long shadows stretched out lazily from the trees and bushes. Ah, the open road, exclaimed the humbug, breathing deeply, for he now seemed happily resigned to the trip. The spirit of adventure, the lure of the unknown, the thrill of a gallant quest. How very grand indeed. Then, pleased with himself, he folded his arms, sat back, and left it at that. In a few more minutes, they had left the open countryside and driven into a dense forest. This is the scenic route, straight ahead to point of view, announced a rather large road sign, but contrary to its statement, all that could be seen were more trees. As the car rushed along, the trees grew thicker and taller and leafier until just as they'd hidden the sky completely, the forest abruptly ended and the road bent itself around a broad promontory. I'm sorry, I haven't done that for ages. Stretching below to the left, the right, and straight ahead, as far as anyone could see, lay the rich green landscape through which they had been travelling. Remarkable view, announced the humbug, bouncing from the car as if he were responsible from the, for the whole thing. Oh, ain't it beautiful, gasped Milo. Oh, I don't know, <laughs> answered a strange voice. All depends on how you look at things. I beg your pardon, for Milo, for he didn't see who had spoken. I said it all depends on how you look at things, repeated the voice. <laughs> oh my word. Milo turned round and found himself staring at two very neatly polished brown shoes, for standing directly in front of him, if he could use the word standing for anyone suspended in midair. What? was another boy just about his age whose feet were easily three feet off the ground. For instance, continued the boy, <laughs> if you happen to like deserts, you might not think that this was beautiful at all. That's true, said the humbug, who didn't like to contradict anyone whose feet were so far off the ground. For instance, said the boy again, if Christmas trees were people, and people were Christmas trees, we'd all be chopped down, put up in a living room and covered with tinsel, while the trees opened our presents. What's, what's that have anything to do with it? said Miley. Nothing at all, he answered. But it's an interesting possibility, don't you think? How, how are you managing to stand up there? asked Milo, for this was the subject that most interested him. I was about to ask you a very similar question, answered the boy, for you must be much older than you look to be standing down there on the ground. What do you mean? Milo asked. Well, said the boy, in my family everyone is born in the air with his head at exactly the height he's going to be when he's a grown-up. Then we all grow towards the ground. When we're fully grown up, or as you can see, grown down, our feet finally touch. Of course, there are a few of us whose feet never reach the ground, no matter how old we get, but I suppose it's the same in every family. He hopped a few steps in the air, skipped back to where he started, and then began again. 
You certainly must be very old to have reached the ground already. Oh no, said Milo seriously. In my family, we all start on the ground and grow up. We never know how far until we actually get there. <laughs> what silly system, the boy laughed. Then your head keeps changing its height and you can always see things in a different way. Why, when you're 15, things won't look at all the way they did when you were 10. And at 20, everything will change again. Well, yeah, I suppose it will, said Miley. He'd never really thought about the matter. We always see things from the same angle, said the boy. It's much less trouble that way. Besides, it takes more sense to grow down than not up. When you're very young, you can never hurt yourself falling down if you're in mid-air, and you certainly can't get into trouble for scuffing up your shoes or marking a floor if there's nothing to scuff them on and the floor is three feet away. That's very true, thought Tok, who wondered how the dogs in the family liked this arrangement. However, there are many ways to look at things, remarked the boy. For instance... You had orange juice, boiled eggs, toast and jam and milk for breakfast, he said, turning to Milo. And you were always worried about people wasting time, he said to Tok. And you are almost never right about anything, he said, pointing at the humbug. And when you are, it's usually an accident. A gross exaggeration, protested the bug, who didn't realise that so much was visible to the naked eye. Amazing, gasped Tok. How'd you do all that? asked Milo. Simple. Simple, he said proudly. I'm Alec Bings. I can see through things. I can see whatever is inside, behind, around, covered by, or subsequent to anything else. In fact, the only thing I can't see is whatever happens to be right in front of me on nose. Isn't that a little bit inconvenient? asked Milo, whose neck was becoming quite stiff from looking up. It is a little, replied Alec, but it's quite important, but it's, it's quite, I've forgotten his voice now, but it's quite important to know what lies behind things, and the family helps me to take care of the rest. My father sees to things, my mother looks after things, my brother sees beyond things, my uncle sees the other side of every question, and my little sister Alice, she sees under things. How can she see under things if she's all the way up there? growled the humbug. Well, added Alec, turning a neat cartwheel, wherever she can't see, she overlooks. Would it be possible for me to see something from up there? asked Milo politely. Well, you could, said Alec, but only if you try very hard to look at things as an adult does. Milo tried as hard as he could, and as he did, his feet floated slowly off the ground until he was standing in the air next to Alec Bings. He looked around very quickly, and an instant later, crashed back down to earth again. Interesting, wasn't it? asked Alec. Yeah, it was, agreed Milo, rubbing his head and dusting himself off. But I think I'll continue to see things as a child. It's not so far to fall down. Oh, a wise decision, at least for time being, said Alec. Everyone should have his point of view, you know. Is, you know, in this everyone's point of view? Asked Tok, looking round curiously. No, of course not, replied Alec, sitting himself down on nothing. It's only mine, and you certainly can't always look at things from someone else's point of view. For instance, from here, that looks like a bucket of water, he said, pointing to a bucket of water. But from an ant's point of view, it's a vast ocean. From an elephant's, it's just a cool drink. To a fish, of course, it's home. So, you see, the way you see things depends a great deal on where you look at them from. Now, come along and I'll show you the rest of forest. He ran quickly through the air, stopping occasionally to beckon Milo, Tok and the humbug along. And they followed as well as anyone who had to stay on the ground could. Does everyone here grow up the way you do? puffed Milo when he'd caught up. Almost everyone, replied Alec. Then he stopped a moment and thought, now, now and then though, someone does begin to grow differently. Instead of down, his feet grow up towards sky, but we do our best to discourage awkward things like that. What happens to them? 
insisted Moira. Oddly enough, they often grow ten times the size of everyone else, said Alec thoughtfully. And I've heard that they walk among the stars. And with that, he skipped off once again towards the waiting woods. Hmm. Next chapter is called A Colourful Symphony. Yeah, it's a normal length. I was going to read it, but it's just a page or two. All right, there you go. I'm Like I said the other day, I'm doing a chapter a day at the moment, okay? So they're a little bit shorter than in my other playlist videos, the sessions. But that's okay, isn't it? Like a chapter a day. We're all right. We're handling it, aren't we? All right. Okay, look. The weather is still nice here. Oh, you can't really see because that stupid curtain. But the weather's still nice here. Is it nice where you are? I hope so. All right. Uh, it's today is Friday. If you celebrate Easter, I hope you have a lovely Easter. I'll see you tomorrow anyway. But I know it's a long weekend for some, so you might not even be with me tomorrow. But I'll be here, even if you're not. You can always catch up, they can't you? Yeah. All right. I've waffled on enough for today. <laughs> see you later.